first of all, this movie doesn't make sense. It's also kind of weird. The movie starts with something that you have to simply accept. That there's this band that would want to reunite with a 10-year-old kid voice taking the place of its own lead singer. Similarly, there are other adults in general who get excited about this. The main idea of all this is reincarnation. Another thing that you have to simply accept without any effort from the movie to make even a decent argument about it. The movie even embraces the idea with no sarcasm and a lot of wish fulfillment. It would have been far better and go much deeper with its targeted themes if the movie decides to be for example a dark comedy. These types of family movies always express their idealism with wholesomeness and dramatic sword hands and often end with makeshift families coming together, talking animals making friends, brothers bonding through, or anything similar. So it's all the more bizarre that this idealistic wholesome tale is geared toward getting the audience to feel Gina's unhealthy obsession with both her dead brother and this 10-year-old kid. The movie does take some steps to show that she might be a bit lost about everything, cluing us into her past history at a mental hospital and even a vending machine metaphor about a broken internal light. But being that these types of films are about actualizing the impossible, inappropriate fixations of reincarnation are a wild sell. The child is practically an angel in the eyes of Gina, and the movie fits him in there to be like a golden child with little interior life of his own. The film also edits Tommy Reagan with start and stop line delivery and makes him seem all the more like everyone's projection of an almost inhuman innocence. This movie has a bizarre impulse to prove itself, to prove that it's not the usual type of family-friendly drama. It tries to give some kind of dark vibe, but it just makes itself weirder. For example, the movie is obsessed with the word shit and pepper the dialogue with it. But even more so, it's not afraid of death's weightiness. The problem is, the movie is clumsy when presenting its darkest stuff and cannot balance that with its sporadic attempts at broad humor. A subplot about how Vaughn's guitar goes missing is so sketchy, it barely makes sense. This movie is the kind of movie that turns the reincarnation into cardboard. The movie eventually develops its story in a direction you cannot believe. Jarring tonal changes happen throughout the movie, and instead of deepening the story, they just make it more awkward. It's bizarre when a script goes off the deep end for the sake of tidiness, right up until it has to resolve all of its problem with a couple unbelievable twists at the end, including possibly the most gullible grandparents in cinematic history. Now, about the big question. Is this 10-year-old rock and roll wizard really the reincarnation of the heroine's dead rock star brother? Well, you will not care.